I think it was a wonderful ending uh, talk by, uh, by Bishop Schneider. I want to remind all those who are here present that Bishop Schneider is one of the bishops who is a member of our academy. He is not only invited to speak, but he is himself a member of our academy, together with one cardinal, one archbishop, and one other auxiliary bishop. And so we have some very high representatives of the church, uh, from whom we hope they will preserve this academy of being um, anathematized uh, <laughs> or burnt in, in Rome. Um, a, a, anyway, I think this, this um, insistence on the lie of brain death and on the truth uh, as foundation of a culture of life was a very beautiful and important conclusion because that is the goal of our academy to serve the truth about man, the truth also about God, the truth about life, the truth about the family. And so mm, I think we have to, I will write a letter of, of gratitude in the name of the Academy to uh, Bishop Schneider for this uh, beautiful final uh, talk. I also would like to say that I think at the conclusion of this uh, second international conference or symposium or congress or whatever we want to call it on brain death, uh, we have, uh, we have um, I, I think with your help, uh, and I wish here again to thank especially Dr. Doyen uh, Nguyen and Dr. Paul Byrne, who have, uh, have had the task of organizing and of directing this conference, but also all the others who have helped, Virginia and, and, and all the board members and, and all others. I want to thank uh, everybody who had, has made this, this meeting possible. I think we have, we can with great happiness and gratitude say that all the uh, presentations and lectures in this meeting have been on a very high quality, both in their truth content and also in their, on their academic level. And I hope that if we publish this as a book, it will have a great impact. I also want to express my joy and gratitude that uh, we have here a Polish a priest who is a Dominican, I think, no? Yeah, and who had been, has been a professor at this university. And he is uh, Father Jacek Maria Morkowski. And he is, um, is inviting us or suggesting to our academy and since all members of the board are here present, I will ask them after the meeting to tell to give me their okay, <laughs> but he asked me whether a group of doctors, of medical doctors and priests in Poland, who are all um, subscribing to the to the uh, to the truths which we uh, proclaim in our statutes and which we try to defend in this conference, could form could not be joining the. Uh, this John Paul II Academy for human life and for the family. And he is already a member of our academy, but I want to propose to our board that we, f that we take this beautiful invitation and fruit of this particular conference as a motive to found <laughs> a John Paul II Academy uh, uh, for Human Life and the Family in Poland, which is associated with our international, uh, with our Academy of for Human Life, and that this may become an example of other kind of chapters or or um, representations of this academy in different countries. 
And I think that would be a great idea that we do not stay just a small academy that meets uh, once or twice in Rome, but that we will be a worldwide network of such an academy for human life and for the family. And so I personally welcome very much and propose to our board to perhaps afterwards in a meeting decide on it that we will ask uh, uh, you, <laughs> dear father, to, to see whether your other colleagues in Poland would agree to become such a, a John Paul II Academy for Human Life and the Family in Poland that is associated and has the same statutes as our academy, and so is somehow a, a branch or a, a second campus, <laughs> a second seat of this academy. And since we are named after the Holy Saint Pope John Paul II, who is a son of Poland, it certainly would be most fitting that the first branch of this academy uh, will be founded in Poland. And therefore, I am very strongly in favor of this idea, but we can clear it up. <laughs> and uh, maybe others, uh, our English friends, British friends, American friends, uh, uh, others will come with similar proposals, and we have perhaps several such uh, seats of the academy. Also following the example of, of John Paul II, after whom we are named, who has founded the John Paul II Institute for the Studies of Marriage and Family in Rome, but then it has also a seat in Washington, a seat in Australia, a seat in Mexico. So we can follow this example also in this sense. So thank you, dear father, for this proposal, and I hope we will progress with it. Um, I want also to announce in these uh, final words um, the, that we plan, but we, we very much need, uh, we very much depend on the response to the, to the invitation which uh, dear Michael uh, has expressed just a few minutes ago, <laughs> namely, that there is a rich uh, use made of our homepage of the new button that <laughs> allows people to donate to this academy because without money we will not be able to, uh, to realize that goal, namely the goal to have another conference, another similar conference to this one, but not on brain death, but on the family. And I think the general idea of this conference, uh, which Dr. Uh, Tom Ward is going to organize um, uh, is largely, well, is, is the, the kind of proclaiming and studying and expounding the truth about the family. And as you all know, the truth about the family is in a terrible, uh, confused state in the world today so that the family uh, consists of a father and a mother and not of two fathers or two mothers, th that there is, uh, there is um, the foundation of, of the understanding of marital love and of marriage, that there is the understanding of the need of education of the children and of the principle of education. So I think there are, uh, that there is the openness to human life that we made as topic of our Humane Vitae conference a year ago, that the gender ideology which considers the femininity or masculinity of a person as a mere matter of choice and arbitrary decision, and that promotes the transsexual operations surgery, that we, I think, uh, if we want to serve life and, and the family and the truth, we should address this question and the exact form in which this is to be done is still in the process of development. But I invite our Vice President, uh, Dr. Thomas Ward, to tell us some of his ideas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we have the St. John Paul Academy for Human Life and the Family. And uh, I think this, this conference has been utterly superb. Um, so if we are contemplating next year's, 
I think that, uh, you know, I, where God builds a chapel, the devil builds a tavern. So maybe it would be an idea just to say a little prayer for next year's conference. And I, I think that perhaps uh, St. John Paul is listening intently to everything that's going on here since Doyen's prayer. You have really made him sit up. <laughs> so, <laughs> St. John, for the next conference, St. John Paul, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of the Family, pray for us. Our proposed theme is Defense of the Family and Parents' Rights. That's the, the main title with a subtitle an academic analysis distilled for practical applications uh, by parents. Uh, the, the, the photographs are simply to cheer us up and try to get us into a, a, another mindset for, for next year. In preparation for our 2020 Congress in the family, I asked a good number of parents how they particularly personally prior to prioritize the dangers to their families, both from the world and, alas, from the dangers within the church. The aim of the questionnaire was to help our academy at its next Congress on how best to help parents exercise their God-given primary right and duty to educate and protect their children. We ask parents in Ireland, Britain and Australia. These are some of the things that came up. And I, I hear what uh, Professor Zeifert says. This is, as it were, the raw material of what people are worried about, which is in some ways a little bit different from the acad immediate academic approach. They're worried about parenting. They're worried about social media. They're worried about disciplining, uh, appropriate disciplining of their children. They're worried about how they get appropriate catechesis for their children. Role models of fathers and mothers in the formation of boys and uh, uh, men and women. The critical role of marital unity in the human development of children and where the marital uni unity is beginning to break down, where they can go to get help. They want us to help to point them to, on, on, on matters of religious education. They say, yes, uh, we Catholic parents are the primary educators of our children, but what do we educate? What do we teach? Do we teach 2,000 years, the 2,000 year old gospel, or do we teach the anti-gospel, which is so dominant today? And they, they are very aware of this. They're worried about their freedom. Even when they're home educating now, they're worried about their freedom. Home education in our country is threatened by the government and by homosexualist organizations. People are very aware of the dangers of neologisms, the inventions of words, such as hate speech, which is being used to criminalize teaching doctrine to their children and its defense in schools and this is happening all over the West. On sex education, they're worried about their legal rights. They're worried about Amoris Laetitiae. They're worried about the, the rights of children being corrupted. They would like us to help them to develop an understanding of the motivation and methods being used against them by, by our enemies. They want help, academic input on their legal position. In, in law, particularly uh, how they can maneuver within law to deal with social workers, doctors, healthcare professionals, teachers, and sadly, also problematical clerics. They are frightened their children will be removed. Okay. Uh, they, want input, they want good input on homosexuality, gender theory, abortifacients, the forced euthanizing, euthanizing of their relatives, such as the Alfie Evans case. Yesterday, we received a message from a French mother. 
She thanked us for our support. She thanked us because she didn't feel alone. These people who have written to me feel alone. They ask us, us for their help, our help. I think in our conference next year, we must answer the appeals of these lonely people. Thank you. The, the two vice presidents, to my right and to my left, and the president uh, want to uh, speak a few words of thanking everybody who contributed to this conference. And I invite first our until now silent vice president <laughs> to s speak first. Thank you, Joseph. Well, I don't, I don't have many words, only I want to thank everybody, well, not only the speakers who have been absolutely top class, absolutely wonderful, the organizers who have been heroic, and I include, of course, the two specialists in brain, in, 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 in brain death, supposedly, Dr. Paul Byrne, who is a pioneer, for many, many years he has taken this, this uh, fight forward, and Dr. Doyen uh, Nguyen, um, who has absolutely incredible um, grasp of all the, all the input, the philosophy, the theology, the medicine, and it's absolutely incredible, and how simply she was able to help us to understand. So, but I also want to thank... <laughs> but I also want to thank all of those who came to this, because we are a new academy, we um, are not very well known, and the fact that you came has given us courage to continue, and we hope that you will come next year to the Congress that will probably be in the United States, because our idea is to have one year in Rome, one year in the States, in order to grow our, our, the knowledge of the things we are putting forward. So thank you very much, and congratulations, all of you, for being our, our foundational members. This is a prayer that that, uh, that Dr. Byrne, and it's fitting for our conference, I think. This is the uh, prayer for those who are victims of this uh, brain death industry, uh, which is very painful. We should every day pray for, for them. Let us pray for those who will lose their lives today through, uh, through organ and tissue harvesting. And let us pray for those perpetrating this evil, that they may recognize the truth of their actions and receive the grace to amend their lives. Amen. Maybe say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that is is in heaven. Give us this day our daily breath, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Regina Tseceli, letare, alleluia. Viva, perfino isti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, Sicutixit, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deo, Alleluia. And maybe the conclusive blessing, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you very much. Thank you.